what we're going to do in this tutorial is basically bring together the two major principles that we've been discussing in the previous tutorials, which are the calculations involving number of moles, so mass over molar mass and concentration times volume, and of course the stoichiometry involved in balanced equations. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out a question, I'm going to talk you through how we go about using the calculations and the stoichiometry to go about solving that problem. So the first question here is iron is produced by reacting iron three oxide with carbon monoxide. What mass of iron is produced from one kilogram of iron three oxide? Now, of course, before we start, we need a balanced equation. Now, in an exam question, they may give you the equation and ask you to balance it, or they may just give you the balanced equation. Either way, you need that balanced equation in order to move forward. So we know that iron three oxide, which is Fe2O3, reacts with carbon monoxide to produce iron. And what we actually get as well is carbon dioxide. So in terms of balancing this equation, if you want to have a go yourselves, pause the video now. But in terms of balancing the equation, what we've got is we make two ions and three carbon monoxides give three CO2. So that is our balanced equation. Now, whenever you get a question like this and you need to use stoichiometry and these calculations to get to the answer, it is a three step process. Well, you know, in, in basic terms, it's a three step process. Okay. Sometimes a little more involved, but essentially these three steps will get you the answer. So number one is find the number of moles of something. And I mean anything, because if you remember from the stoichiometry video, if you know the number of moles of one thing in this equation, you can find the number of moles of something else. So you can't just do this using mass. You need to find the number of moles. Now, what can we find the number of moles of? Well, what have we got information about? Well, we don't have any information about anything to help us with moles apart from we know we're starting with a kilogram of iron three oxide. So we can find the number of moles of this because as I said before, you've always got access to the molar mass of substances. So we can find the number of moles of iron three oxide that are actually going into this reaction. So step one, the number of moles of iron oxide is mass over molar mass. And of course the mass is given to us, that's a kilogram, but I'm gonna go ahead and put that into grams. So that is 1000 grams of iron three oxide divided by the molar mass, which you can use your periodic table to calculate by adding up the AR values, but that will give you 159.6 grams per mole. So that's the molar mass of iron three oxide. When you plug that into your calculator, what you will get is 6.266 moles. So that's the number of moles of iron to oxide. Now, this is a rounded figure, okay? I haven't rounded it too much, but it is a rounded figure. What I suggest is you keep the full figure in your calculator for the next part of the process. Speaking of which, the next part of the process is stoichiometry. So this is basically where we're using that balanced equation to find the number of moles of another substance in this equation. So if we know the number of moles of iron two oxide, we can find the number of moles of iron, okay? Number two, stoichiometry. So the ratio between the iron three oxide, Fe2O3, and Fe is a one to two relationship. So this is one mole of Fe2O3 produces two moles of Fe, therefore, 6.266 moles of Fe2O3 will give us twice as much in terms of number of moles of iron. So that's times two, which actually gives us 12.53 moles of iron. So that's the number of moles of iron that we've produced. And we are now just one step away from finding the mass of iron that is produced. So the final step, I'm just going to be vague about this one, is to convert. Now, if the question is asked you for a concentration, you can use that number of moles to find the concentration along with a volume, of course, if that you'll be given. What we're doing here is looking for a mass. So the third and final step to find the mass of iron is the mass 
of Fe, that is number of moles times molar mass. So the number of moles that we have in this equation in real terms is 12.53 moles. The molar mass of iron, I have it on good authority for my periodic table, that it is 55.8. And that equals 699.25 grams. And that is our final answer, okay? So we find the number of moles of something, anything, we use our stoichiometry to get to the substance that the question is asking about, and then we just convert that into the final answer here. So, you, you know, if the answer is the number of moles, then fine, you've got the answer there. But usually they'll ask you for a mass or maybe for a molar mass of the substance or the concentration or volume. So you can always convert it using other information. So I'm just going to go ahead and give you one more example of aqueous solutions in terms of how to go about this. Okay, so this time we've got solutions. 25 centimeter cubed of potassium hydroxide was needed to neutralize 50 centimeter cubed of 0 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed sulfuric acid. Calculate the concentration of the potassium hydroxide. We've got a lot of information here, but what we know is the volume of the potassium hydroxide. We also know the volume and concentration of sulfuric acid. So what can we find the number of moles of? Well, we can't find the number of moles of the potassium hydroxide, but we can find the number of moles of sulfuric acid in our equation, okay? Because we have the concentration and we have the volume. So first things first, what we need is a balanced equation. Sulfuric acid plus potassium hydroxide gives us potassium sulfate, our salt and water. Now in terms of balancing, we need two potassiums over here and if we balance out our hydrogens and oxygens, we find that we get two waters as well, which is inconsequential to this question, but you do make sure you have a full balanced equation. Step one, find the number of moles of something. Well, I've got enough information here to find the number of moles of sulfuric acid that's going into this reaction. So number one, the number of moles of H2SO4 equals concentration times volume. We've got a concentration of 0 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed, and we have a volume of 50 centimeters cubed. Now, do not forget that we've got centimeters cubed here. Our volume in this equation needs to be in decimeters cubed. So we need to divide that by 1000. Otherwise, we're gonna end up with massive numbers. So the number of moles of sulfuric acid in this case is five times 10 to the minus three moles. Okay, so that's the number of moles there. Straight into step two, we've got our stoichiometry. So if we look at this equation, H2SO4 is in a ratio with potassium hydroxide, and that is a one to two relationship. Okay, so one mole of H2SO4 reacts with two moles of potassium hydroxide. So we can find the number of moles of that quite easily. And therefore, the number of moles of potassium hydroxide equals five times 10 to the minus three, which is the number of moles of sulfuric acid. Multiply that by two, and that gives us 0 0.01 moles. It's not in standard form anymore, but that doesn't matter, okay? 0 0.01 moles every day of the week. So that is the number of moles of potassium hydroxide. So how do we find the concentration? How do we convert that number of moles into a concentration, which is what the question's asking for? Well. What we know is that the concentration of potassium hydroxide, we can use the equation number of moles divided by volume. That will give us our concentration. So 0 0.01 moles divided by 25, but again, that's gotta be divided by a thousand to make sure that that's in decimeters. And what we find is that gives us, once we put it into our calculator, 0 0.4 moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, so again, a three-step process to get to the answer here. So our three steps in terms of using calculations and stoichiometry, find the number of moles of something, anything, okay? No matter how you do it, the information will be in the question. Once you have the number of moles of one thing in an equation, you can very easily find the number of moles of anything else in there. So that's where your stoichiometry comes in. Last but not least, you need to convert. Converting in this case, uh, number of moles into a mass. Converting in this case, number of moles into a concentration. 
The last thing I will say is look at the way I've set these out. Now, yes, the examiner's job is to mark your exam. It is to find the answers that you've written on the page and give you the marks for them. Make it easy for the examiner. They are marking thousands of papers. So what I suggest is you lay it out like this. Always say what it is you're calculating. Okay, you don't always have to write this here, but clearly show the calculation you're doing. And every single time you write a number down, okay, at the end of a calculation, I would underline it right at the end what it is, or at least put the units on the end. Okay, so that we're calculating number of moles here. Same here. And of course, this has ended up being a mass moles, moles, and concentration. Okay, so lay out your calculations clearly and concisely, and that increases the chances of you getting all the marks because you're showing all your working in a logical order as well. Okay, so that's how we go about using calculations hand in hand with stoichiometry, and there's two examples for you there.